Parkinson's Law should help you prioritize what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, so that you can compose and write in the freedom of knowing that everything is kind of in place and you've taken care of everything. You're not missing anything. There's not an open loop saying, oh, you're forgetting this, you're forgetting that. Because when you have a project deadline and you employ Parkinson's Law to help with your efficiency, your time management, your decision making, your productivity, your motivation, and your creativity, then you know what to work on when to work on it, and how to work on it. What is happening, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the 52 Q's podcast, your weekly insight into all things production and library music. My name is Dave Croft, and it is so good to be with you today. If you're watching this on YouTube and you find this video helpful, then please give us a thumbs up. And if you're listening to the audio on the go, then why don't you consider giving us a five star review? It really does help folks find us either way. Hit that subscribe because we talk about library and production music every single week. This episode wouldn't be possible without the amazing support of our family, friends, and neighbor subscribers of 52Qs who not only keep the community alive and thriving, but as members, they also get access to extra perks like live streams, workshops, Zoom feedback sessions, hundreds of hours of video archives, and the ability to post to real music publishers. So um, if you're ready to get started and make push into your career and you want to surround yourself in a community of like-minded, friendly, supportive production music composers, then head over to 52Qs.com. It is free to join and memberships start at around four bucks a month. It is good to be back with you. I am back into the swing of things here um, at Full Sail. Our spring break was last week and uh it was not a break at all because for me, I invited uh, several of our family subscribers to Orlando and we had a three-day family reunion. We called it the family reunion and we spent uh, a couple of days grilling out. I made wings. I made burgers and hot dogs on another day. We had amazing pizza, Lazy Moon here in Orlando. Also went to Marlowe's Tavern. It was a lot of food. <laughs> I would be surprised if anyone went away hungry. Also spent a day at Full Sail, met up with one of my publishers, took a full, uh, uh, took a tour of the campus. It was really, really, really good. But I'm actually a little bit behind on my writing, which, well, I'm not really behind in so much that I was ahead and now I'm kind of caught up. So we're going to listen to a cue here in just a minute called What Are You Alfredo, which is another European cafe dramedy cue. But um, one of my thoughts from this week and what, what a huge takeaway from having folks travel from, from Switzerland, from Colorado, from Oregon, from Idaho, from North Carolina, from Georgia, all over Texas. Did I get everybody? I hope I got everybody. One of the things that really hit home for me was how important being together and surrounding yourself with like-minded people who, I mean, at one point we were, we were all internet strangers and there was a bit of a risk, you know, inviting folks who I, I hadn't ever met in person into my home and spending three days with them. I mean, that's, that's no small risk, but I was confident that the universe had amazing plans for this past weekend and man, did it deliver. And I already miss those guys. The house is really, really quiet because it's just me and Shannon and her mom living here. And uh, so I miss everybody. But being surrounded by all those people, we were all there for a common purpose, which wasn't just to learn about production music. It wasn't just to talk about royalties and splits and publishers and contracts. I mean, yeah, that, that kind of happened. But there's something energetically that happens when a group of people come together, like-minded, all with the central purpose of just getting to know each other. And so real friendships are happening that, that, that yes, happen through the Zoom. And I know that not everybody could, could have come. And that's fine. I don't think I could have housed everybody. But 
there's real relationship that happens when you're able to meet face to face. So one of the things that we're going to start doing in the 52Qs community, and this is for all, all members of the community, whether they're paid subscribers or members or not, one of the things we're going to start doing is having local meetups and letting 52Qs, the community, be a hub where folks can meet up. So, so if you're watching this and you're a member of the 52Qs community and you would like to host a meetup or just help coordinate it or just be the point person, please let me know. Send me a DM in the 52Qs uh, Mighty Network, and I would love to set that up. We'll set up an event and call it local, meet up at a restaurant or a bowling alley or a pizza joint or whatever. But I think it's really, really important outside of the conferences, outside of the workshops, outside of the professional meetups, just gathering, becoming friends, and I'm pretty sure that there's there's another podcast episode baked in here. In, in fact, I know there is, because one of the things we did while we had all these folks here is we recorded a live episode, a roundtable episode, which we've done with some of the family members before. And um, the video, it was challenging because we had 12 people and me, so 13 people in a shot multiple microphones and everything. So it's going to take a little while to get it edited. And a big shout out to Professor Leo Voin, who, who takes care of the video editing of our interview episodes here. But that's going to be coming out in just a couple of months. So be on the lookout for that. And a huge thanks to everybody who who paid their real actual money to, to travel down to Orlando. They got Airbnbs, they got hotels, they booked flights. Some of them drove eight to, we had somebody drove from Nashville. And I think that's like a 12 hour drive just just to hang out with fellow community members. So a huge shout out to all of those folks who joined us. Now, as far as the queue, and this this was a queue that was written uh, two weeks ago, but it was submitted this week, just trying to get ahead for the Expedition 52. And this is called What Are You Alfredo, which continues more um, <laughs> food-based puns. And uh, this uh, features... Melodica kind of disguised as a an, an accordion, as well as a tenor ukulele faking a mandolin sound. was What Are You, Alfredo? And uh, if you are a family, friend, or neighbor subscriber, you can actually check out the live stream production of this. I spent the last couple of weeks putting this together, and you can see me uh, tackle the uh, the tremolo technique and learning tremolo technique. And for you family and friend subscribers, I'll be doing a full cue breakdown of that later later this week. For our topic today, a question for you. Why is it anytime they 
widen highways, the traffic gets heavier. You know, we think, hey, four lanes isn't enough. Let's make six because four lanes is getting backed up. Let's go ahead and add two more lanes. And before you know it, within the next few months, the six lane highway is as jammed as the four lane highway. Have you ever thought about why that is? Well, this is actually a concept and a principle called Parkinson's Law, which states that work expands to fill time available until its completion. Extracted in traffic patterns, that means that if people know that there are more lanes to use, then more people will use the highways. And so this principle creates this almost feedback loop that expand. So no matter how big the highway is, the traffic will expand. For us composers, that often manifests itself in our projects. No matter how much time we have to work on a project, we will fill and expand that time to fill up that project. And I want to talk about some pitfalls and some positives in Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law, like I said, uh, states that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. And, and this means that the more time you give to a task, the likelier uh, it will take longer to finish due to expanded goals, perfectionism, uh, less efficient work, procrastination, maybe? This concept was, was coined, this idea, I, it was in The Economist in 1955 by historian and author Cyril Northcote Parkinson. And I want to talk about this specifically for us production music composers in a handful of areas and talk about the positives and some of the pitfalls. First of all, efficiency. How does Parkinson's law affect our efficiency? Well, if we have plenty of time to work with and, and we can put our time and budget our time accordingly, then we can actually make more efficient work process. We can focus on what's essential at the time and budget everything out accordingly. We can increase our efficiency, especially with time management. When I had my first Discovery Channel contract, I had a year to write 90 cues. And because I knew I had all that time, I was able to budget using Asana. I was able to budget, okay, this number of cue per week, these number of cues, it's about two cues per week with some breaks and holidays and everything. And I planned them all out. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have plenty of time to work with. But by giving myself a lot of time, it felt like I worked on that project for an entire year. Well, because I, I did. I did write those cues, those 90 cues, for an entire year. So the project itself expanded to fill the time that I had available. Where this gets in trouble and where the pitfall is, is overestimating capacity, overestimating um, how long it will take to actually do it, and overpromising. <laughs> That's my kryptonite. Overestimating my capacity. And if I hadn't sat down and, and, and budgeted two cues per week for a year, then I wouldn't be able to do it. But even, even this year, I've caught myself doing this, saying, yeah, I'll have those cues done by the end of the month. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't have the, physically have the capacity to do that. Just uh, ringing any bells. <laughs> so that's a pitfall of the efficiency and time management aspect of Parkinson's Law. We know we have all kinds of time, so we take our time. We procrastinate. 
or we overestimate how long things are going to take. And then that turns into stress and anxiety. Under-delivering, broken, broken promises, apologies, and all that feels really crummy. I mean, it might not be deal breaking. I mean, you might not, you know, destroy your relationship, but you're eroding the trust. And over time, you can take a really sharp relationship that just dulls. So efficiency and time management, Parkinson's law, the positives and the pitfalls to watch out for. Next, how does Parkinson's law affect our decision making? Well, if we put the, the project into a box and say, here's where it start, starts and here's where it ends, then it can help with our decision making because we know we don't have all kinds of time. We know that, oh, I only have a week to finish a queue or two weeks to finish an album. This helps our decision making. This is one of the things we're seeing in the Expedition 52 group. Folks knowing that they need to post something every single week motivates their decision making. I, I don't have time to overthink this. I don't have time to get in the weeds and really like fuss with the mix for three days. No. You've got to make a decision. You're going to stick with it and you're going to go. Not overthinking what patches to use, not getting so overwhelmed with, uh, do I use this base pulse or this base pulse? No, you know that when you have a, a finite amount of time, then Parkinson's law can help that. The pitfall of that, though, is that sometimes you might be overlooking better solutions. Maybe you, you rush out a mix... <laughs> because of Parkinson's law, but because of that, maybe the mix could have been better if you had time to sleep on it and come back the next day. You can overlook better solutions. You can make not great decisions. Yep. Next, productivity. If you're embracing Parkinson's law, and you have a finite amount of time, and you've employed your efficiency and time management, then you can actually accomplish a lot. Because you're going to fill up the time that you have with all of these steps, all of these parts of the projects, or the, the cues that you're working on, or whatever. And it might mean that I have a week to finish this, so I know that I'm going to spend you know, this many hours sketching, this many hours composing and producing, this many hours mixing. And because you know that you have that time, you will fill up that time and be much more productive. You can accomplish more in less time. But the pitfall of that is you could lead to burnout. It could lead to stress. It could lead to that feeling of always, always, always working. At the end of that, that first discovery contract, I felt like I was always, always working on this one contract with little, little end in sight. And, and that was exacerbated by the fact that when the contract was up, we got another contract. And this time it's 45 cues instead of 90, but it was ever present, which leads me to the next aspect of Parkinson's law, which can help with motivation. That sense of urgency that helps your productivity, helps your decision-making, can really light a fire under your internal motivation. It can spur you on. It can move you forward. Even when you don't want to write, you do because you know that there is a, a project window. Again, this is what's happening in Expedition 52. And to a lesser extent, this is what happens in the what are you writing weekly threads that we put out to the entire community. Although with Expedition 52, it's somewhat gamified and there is a buy-in. It's only a dollar a week, but... You've got a little bit of skin in the game, and that aspect helps motivate you to keep writing. 
I've heard from members who say, absolutely. The only reason I wrote this week is because I knew I needed to post something up to the Expedition 52 weekly thread. I don't want to fall behind. I still want to get my badge. I want to get my prize. I want to get my money's worth. And the only way we do that is by participating. The pitfall is that without that motivation, without that deadline, without a Parkinson's law in place to help you, your motivation goes out the window. And this is, this is huge for me. When I'm working with the library and, I, I, and, and they say, hey, we'd, we'd love some cues. The first thing I ask is, when do you need it? Because I know procrastinator Dave will tend to wait to the last minute and rush it out or overestimate uh, how much time I really need and then kind of put it off or put other things in front of it and not prioritize properly. So if I don't have a deadline, then my motivation can quickly fall away, which then leads me into emergency situations later that turn into panic fire drills and I'm running around, which leads to overpromising and under delivery. It's this vicious cycle that, I mean, I'm, will it ever go away? I'm not sure. I think it's one of my, it's my kryptonite. We all have superpowers and we all have kryptonite. And the thing that consistently you're working on, yeah, I need to be like a recovery group, Procrastinators Anonymous. <laughs> I'm sure it exists somewhere, but I would, I would, I would show up every single week for that meeting, <laughs> which can have an impact leading into our, the next aspect of Parkinson's law. And how does it affect our creativity? If you have deadlines, if we know that there's a finite window, then it can spur our decision-making, our productivity and our creativity. You'll be amazed at how creative you can find yourself if you've limited yourself. It's the equivalent of, of having a box of crayons, and instead of getting the big 64 box, you know, the one with the pencil sharpener, the one that we could never afford when I was growing up, we always had the little pack, <laughs> like the little pack from the restaurant or something. But when you were a kid, and although you wanted the 64 pack with the pencil sharpener, when you were a kid, you colored with whatever crayons you had. The limitation created inspiration. You needed a certain shade of green and you only had like forest green, then you would add some yellow to it because you wanted lime or Kelly green instead. So the limitations that Parkinson's law can, can put on you can motivate, uh, spur on creative choices. The limitation forces you to be more creative. Now, the downside of that is, is that the quality may suffer, just like we talked about in decision-making and productivity. The quality of your work may suffer because you may be used to having weeks and weeks to explore a cue or whatever. But as soon as a deadline hits, as soon as we put guardrails, then the clock is ticking. We have, we have to try to fill up that space. Parkinson's law. But if we are still procrastinating and we're, we're falling into some of the pitfalls from the other aspects, then that can really hurt our creativity. Because at the end of the day, Parkinson's law should help you prioritize what needs to be done when it needs to be done so that you can compose and write in the freedom of knowing that everything is kind of in place and you've taken care of everything. You're not missing anything. There's not an open loop saying, oh, you're forgetting this, you're forgetting that. Because when you have a project deadline and you employ Parkinson's law to help with your efficiency, your time management, your decision-making, your productivity, your motivation, and your creativity, then you know what to work on when to work on it, 
and how to work on it. Otherwise, we're not really taking advantage of the long-term benefits of what Parkinson's law can bring to the table. So those are my thoughts. What about you? Have you experienced a brush with Parkinson's law? I know I, I, I see it every day on the road, but in your creative output, in your production music journey, how has Parkinson's law shown itself? And, and again, it's not just a creative industry. Uh, computer programmers deal with Parkinson's law, retail uh, business owners deal with Parkinson's law. It is that work will expand to fill whatever time we give it. But we get to decide how we expand our project and how we spend our time. So let me know in the comments below. I do read all those comments and I would absolutely love to hear from you. Once again, a huge word of thanks to our family, friends, and neighbor subscribers of 52Qs who pay their actual real life money to keep the community going alive and thriving. And I really do appreciate you. And so if you wanna join us, then head over to 52Qs.com. It's free to join and memberships start at around four bucks a month. But that's gonna do it for me this week. You definitely wanna tune in next week where I am going to be joined by composer Yella Dittmar, and we have a fantastic chat. He is a super prolific composer, super smart, and uh, love, uh, I loved our chat, and so I'm gonna be rolling that this or, uh, next week in week 17 of 2024. But I hope you've had a fantastic week 16, and I know and believe and trust that the universe has amazing plans just for you. Until next time, peace.